better immediately. And now I can never go back, even though even though it's in Chelsea Market, a place that I love. Actually, yeah, <laughs> that's brutal. It, it was very sad, but yeah, go to Bagel Pub in okay. Crown Heights. It's they have like a bagel with Zatar cream cheese. It's amazing. Ooh, that sounds so good. Zatar cream cheese? I didn't even know that was a thing. Do you hate the Middle East? It's just it broke up with me, oh, and bummer. we never really made amends. <laughs> Bummer. Yeah, because they saw your... It like, invited me to its wedding, and I was like, I'm sorry, there's too much pain. They saw your <laughs> nebulous identity, and they were like, mm, can't yeah. have any more of that. <laughs> <laughs> Quarter black and part Jewish. Mixing the races? No, Not for us. No, no, no. <laughs> Mixing the races. Yeah, we don't like... We don't, Maddie, I don't know if you know this. We don't We do not do that here. <laughs> we're starting, we, don't, we don't expose ourselves to that riffraff. I don't know. <laughs> If you knew you were being tricked into doing an alt right podcast, <laughs> but that's what's happening. Wait, is this Legion of Skanks? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Louis Gomez, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that would be the wildest <laughs> twist of all time. Yeah, we, we like get off the camera. We're both like, so we're, you, we're all doing Skank Fest this year, right? Yeah. <laughs> Is this? Am I too close to this, or is this? Good? No, you're great. You're okay. great. You're doing. Cool. You're doing great. Hell you're yeah. shining. <laughs> you're glowing. Should we introduce our guest this time, or or not? I don't think we should. I don't think so either. Let her fend for herself. No, 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 no. We'll we'll, we'll we'll let it. We'll let it. We'll let this one air out. This is. <laughs> okay, actually, I I'm not going to introduce you yet, but I do have an opening question for you, guest, yes. anonymous guest. I was talking to Lucas about this last night, and he didn't have an answer for me. Do you think Miss Piggy is hot? personally not my type but i could see the sexual essence of it of her i'm so sorry yes <laughs> so wow <laughs> whoa oh, now it's all right <laughs> miss piggy is the most she her person pig <laughs> ever, that has ever been known to a man or woman yeah so i agree with you that actually oh, yeah. would have been my exact answer <laughs> yeah, she's so, oh no go ahead no wait so wait uh, Wait, what was your answer? I thought you were saying that she was. No, I was just fucking with you. Oh, I think okay. she's also not my type, but I see the sexual essence. Yeah. What were you gonna say about it? Oh, uh, yeah, she's like a, she really exudes like femininity, like like kind of boisterous femininity. Yeah, yeah, she's very commanding. She commands space very well. She could be a great dominatrix. Oh, oh. she would be great at uh, punishment and humiliation. Yeah. Say you eat bacon. <laughs> <laughs> cannibalize me daddy <laughs> poor kermit <laughs> what do you think he thinks about all this oh Where's i think little kermit... bitch boy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think kermit likes miss piggy to like step on his balls as stilettos that's like the vibe oh my God. that he gives up <laughs> no that's way too he's true. a power bottom i know no you can say anything on here you can say anything we started it bottom? in 10 seconds in by saying like we don't mix the races <laughs> so you can say anything oh here. no is that going in yeah, probably. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like Kermit, I see a very sub vibe from Kermit. Mm. Yeah. I feel like. <laughs> are there any other Muppets that you see like vibes from? Who are the two mean old guys in the. Statler and Waldorf. Yeah, I feel like they don't do anything too kinky, but I feel like it's passionate. I think that they're, I think, do you know what I think? I think they're like an older gay couple. They're like, what happened to the younger generation? They're just, <laughs> they're all eating ass. They're all. <laughs> True. They go to one yeah. Brooklyn mic and they're losing their shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's no way. There's no way this is what the gays are doing now. Back in the day, they we were cruising. They started Yas Fest. <laughs> oh, stop that. <laughs> it's staring into the camera. What's up? <laughs> Speaking of the camera, welcome to Two Nosy Meerkats. Welcome Beer to Cats, Two Nosy Meerkats. Shall we finally introduce our guest? The I bit guess, is over. I guess. This is a fantastic comedian who I got to see at a show recently. Never uh, saw them before. Absolutely blew me away. And then I found out they're so successful. Such a successful, be wonderfully talented comedian. Give a round of applause. Uh, <clears throat> you've seen them at JFL on Comedy Central. Round of applause. Maddie Wiener. Woo! Let's go. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you for being here. Oh, yeah. We're very excited to have you. It's so cool because when I met you, I was like starstruck. I was like, oh, TikTok. <laughs> that surprised the hell out of me. I was like, what? <laughs> when I You're... met you, Lucas, I felt the same way. I was starstruck from the yeah. um, 
the sex offender registry. <laughs> <laughs> Remember? <laughs> What a day it was when we were both there registering. <laughs> <laughs> and you were registering us. You're like, these two. <laughs> these two are going to be great comedians one day. So your name is pronounced Wiener, not Weiner. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, it's Wiener. Have people said Weiner? Oh, people say Weiner all the time. I think because it's much more embarrassing to say Wiener and be wrong. You know mm. what I mean? It'd be way worse yes. if it was Weiner and they were like Wiener. And I was like, how, how <laughs> fucking dare you? Are there people with that spelling that at, they legit pronounce it Weiner? Is that a real? It's never Jewish people who get it okay. wrong. <laughs> right. It's like always. Yeah. Jewish people are like, oh, yeah, Wiener. I think yeah. it's like an Ellis Island name. I'm not sure. But okay. yeah, I tried to like go by Weiner for like. Like wait, when I was like in middle school, I was like, oh yeah, Doctor Frankenstein, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, we're rebranding, and my grandpa was like, are you not proud of your heritage? And I was like, oh okay, my fine. god, <laughs> fine, I'll be Wiener forever. My grandfather did the exact opposite. He purposefully changed the last name to Arnold so he would sound less Jewish. Oh wow, yeah, it used to be Aronowitz. That'll give you away. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that you were going to say my grandfather changed his name to Wiener, even though his last <laughs> yeah, yeah. name was Arnold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was Arnold, but he was like, I feel like there's going to be a comedian one day who's going to take the stand-up world by storm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so in, in elementary school, were people always like, oh, Wiener, and that's why you wanted to like go by a different pronunciation for a bit? Yeah, I was like, I'm like a little girl trying to be... And then, uh, oh, wiener. I'm like, this is so gross. Yeah. yeah. Like, just like, yeah, like other kids being like, mm. it's not like a cute name. It's not like Sarah Joy. You know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Sarah Joy is going to do a lot of drugs when she's older. Yeah. Yeah, know? exactly. She yeah. never had to build character. Yeah. She, she peaked early and uh, she's watching this. Yeah, she's um, going to get an academy in real young. One thing I wanted to ask you. So is your middle initial T? Yeah, my middle name is Tandy. Your middle name is Tandy. Yeah, I, which I've I hadn't heard. Wait, that. how do you spell that? T A N D Y. Oh, okay. I thought I was gonna be like like Tandy Newton, like T H or something like that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. What? You're just se secretly uh, what is it, Zimbabwean? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> is Tandy Newton Zimbabwean? She's I I, I I it's probably another country uh, in Africa, but she's like half English, half. <laughs> probably. I'm sorry. Wow. Well, I'm I don't look. actually. I don't know for Jamie, sure. Can you look that up? Yeah, Jamie, pull that up. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to look. That. No, but um, but yeah, no. I wanted to ask because, like, do people uh, DM you or something and totally misunderstand what your name is just from your username? Because I get it's that. Tweener. Yes. <laughs> do people do that? I I had like an old like a. Uh, uh, like my high school drama teacher after I graduated was like, oh, I want to like follow your stand up. Oh, your Instagram is Maddie Tweener, right? And that was the first time that I was like, oh no. Oh shit. <laughs> Wait, but were you doing stand up kind of in high school? Yeah, I started when I was like 16. Yeah. By the way, I just Googled actually Zimbabwe and I got that right. Hey. Yay. <laughs> okay, Lucas, savior of the world. Tandy's going to come to you and be like, oh it's yeah, you affirmed my identity. Let's fuck even though she's so tall you're like two of her <laughs> what just happened sorry i'm just bitter because i love tandy newton oh i, I love her too you guessed she her recently right she didn't. recently changed it actually to tandy way did she yeah because like she like abbreviated it to make it like easier for western people to say it, but it, the full her actual first name is tandy way oh that's awesome yeah so good, good for you yeah that's Tandy way better of a name. A. A. Terrible. So, back to, <laughs> anyway, back to you. Okay. Back to you. When did you start stand-up? I started, like, my sophomore year of high school. I was, like, wow. 16. What inspired you to start? Because I feel like there were times I wanted to start stand-up that young, but I was just terrified of, like, what everyone thought of me. You know what's so stupid? It makes me feel like such a fraud. Is like, I feel like everybody, like, every comic you talk to is, like, I've wanted to since I was nine years old, and I was building up. And I literally was, like... I, there was like an open mic like near my house after school and I was like oh that'd be like fun mm. for like tonight like that was like t I was just like a thing to do and then I met like some friends there who were like no no this is like a whole thing and like come to these mics and then after like three months of like we were doing it like every single night and I sort of looked up and I was like oh I guess I like do this now so it was like sort of on accident and then quickly I was like oh this is my favorite thing in the world and now I actually want to do this oh, wow. but I never was like I want to be a comedian like that didn't even cross my mind as like a possibility how soon into it did you think okay i want to actually pursue this 
I think like three months in. Because I remember three my months. friend being like, so do you like actually want to do this or are you just like fucking around? And I was like, oh my God. But then I feel like it's like once you do it, I'm like, I've never liked something as much as I like this. Yeah. Because yeah. like, I like like every part of it. You know what I mean? It's like the actually being on stage is so fun, but then also like the people that you meet, and like the hangs afterwards. It's like every part of it is like, so I'm like, I don't know. Absolutely. I'm like a real nerd about it. I'm like not going to get too cheesy. But it, no, 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 no. We want you to get cheesy. We want you to go as that. deep as you want because I also, I was not as brave as you were. I did not start doing stand up until I was 24, which I don't regret. I don't wish that I started any earlier than I actually did. That was a perfect time for me. But I was just as obsessed with stand up when I was a kid. Like when I was 13, that's when I found George Carlin. And that's when I, that was just like my brain exploded. And then I just went on a tear of like, uh, ripping stand-up specials off of youtube um i still have a bunch of them on uh my old computer um but yeah that was that was when i got obsessed with stand-up 13. i was not that i was in college like i whoa i always knew i liked stand-up because i would watch like last comic standing but in college was when i would like every night i would like smoke weed and watch a different comedian like every single night and i was but i i still was somehow scared to do it myself but it's weird because I always acted and recently I like acted again for one of my classes and I was like, oh, I actually hate this and I never liked it. I just like performing and I didn't know it was possible to do it a different way. You gaslit oh. yourself? I, <laughs> I always do. Always do. Still was always on in this brain. Wait, are we all theater kids? Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Oh, baby. <laughs> What's your what's your theater kid pass? Are you more of a rock opera girl? Are you more of like wicked? I was okay, so this is like this is an incredibly nerdy answer, but there was a, a, a non profit theater company that was like founded by high school students in my hometown and they like passed the baton for like thirteen years. So they were like it was a legit like five oh one C three. They got like a twenty thousand dollar grant from like the county. Jesus. But there were no adults involved. It was all high school students who like did the finances and then we would put on like <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no, we were literally we were like on the board of directors at like sixteen years old and we would like put on like four plays a year. We would like Shakespeare in the summer and then would legit like get the licensing rights. We put on like a forty eight hour play festival. Holy so shit. That was the thing because it was like you could get to act, you got a chance to direct, you got to like write for the festival. It was like like I learned how to like do stage lights, but it was very like DIY hands on because everybody did everything. And that was like, I didn't really do a lot of like musicals at school and stuff. But once I found that, I was like, oh, this is so cool. That's it. Whoa. So you were almost like producing at that point. Yeah. yeah. You, you were right in the theater business. You were yeah. getting every <laughs> single part of the pie. Yeah. You're like That's seeing insane. everything that goes into like putting on a show. Which That's is, like, so cool. incredible because I feel like so many little shits of like high school actors are like so mean to the tech kids. It becomes this whole thing. At my old school, actually, the tech kids went on strike. Whoa. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. Wait, like, uh, strike for what? What they were trying to get tax better, breaks? What, what were they? Trying? <laughs> better pay? They were like, they're not paying us at all. Yeah. <laughs> it was a public school. They were like, we need a cut of this. We only get zero cents on the dollar that the adults make. Just like <laughs> it was like I was a I was a freshman, and when child happened, rights matter, it was a seat. Yeah, <laughs> we need more child brides. Um, that wasn't related. I'm brides. <laughs> Lucas, that's just something I wanted to say. <laughs> Boiled deep inside of me. Uh, Go on. So I was a freshman, and the seniors were the ones who were on strike. So I heard about, you know, when you're a freshman, you hear about, like, senior gossip, like, third or fourth or fifth hand. And I heard about, like, the senior actors would, like, walk by the techies and say, like, really derisive, mean things to them. And that, like, led them to literally, like, strike and be like oh yeah, what are you going to do? Act in the dark. And so like there had to be like mediation to get the tech kids like back. Wow. So they went on strike to like not be bullied. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of funny in retrospect. Like I wish we could all just do that. Like if someone was mean to me in high school, I wish it could have been like, I'm going to be on strike from you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very adult response. Yeah. But only in tech theater can you actually do that. Cause like mm. you have actual impact over the actors yes yeah oh no i was i was a little bit afraid of the tech kids because i respected them that's the thing is that they were very they were just so much more mature than 
us and the cast were. Like, we were, like, fucking around. They were like, hey, these mic packs are, like, $1,000 a piece. Do you want to check yourself before you wreck yourself? I was like, okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was, I had a very guilty conscience. I was like, I wasn't playing around. It was that. I was like, yeah. Yeah, and now you are a tech kid. No, I am. I am. You've the got all these mics. Oh, Look, yeah. I'm Lucas def- and I went to B&H, and he was, like, speaking another language to these people. He was like, was it Hebrew? <laughs> 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 Yo, what a freak, right? <laughs> I couldn't understand a word. <laughs> I was like, none of this is the Miha Moha. I can't understand it. It's like the one thing I know. <laughs> Oh my god! It's like in World War II where they use like uh, indigenous languages so that like the Axis powers wouldn't <laughs> translate anything. It's like, oh my god, you're all talking tech. It's just Hebrew. It's like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you know, when I thought I heard Zoom Z40 or something, you were actually just saying Baruch Ata. Yeah. <laughs> Liter- literally, the only the only real techie thing was I I knew what an XLR input was. <laughs> just yeah. that, just this little mic input. I, that was the only. That was really the only thing I knew. The intro well, is so cool, though. The little like, so fun. like the conveyor belt. I love on the, top the conveyor belt. Oh, it's so cool. It was funny is that when we were there, like, and we were getting like help from some employees, and then Gabby whispered to me, she was like, "I want the real Jews to help us. I want like the ones with like the full getup, just like to, yeah." Yeah, because some yuppie guy came to help us. So I was like, "Fuck this! What do I come to B and H for?" Yeah, someone who knows their shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You want to be treated like one of the locals, you know? It's like... <laughs> well, I wonder what those guys are like in their own house if they're like, you know, running their Orthodox rituals and they're also like, but we have to set up the speakers for the surround sound. Yeah. We have to do the PS4 input. <laughs> with... Oh, man. Yeah, I'm sure they're big gamer guys. Yeah, oh, yeah. B&H is a fun time. Do you have any other stores that like really calm you? Mm. This is the best question ever. This is my favorite part about moving to New York is the 24-hour Apple store. <gasps> have you been there? I no. didn't know there was a 24-hour Apple store. I am like proselytizing for the 24-hour Apple store. Like I'm trying to get people on board. Okay, okay, okay. It's on Fifth Avenue in like super fancy schmancy like Prada stores in the middle of all that. But the building is so crazy because it's just this giant like three-story glass cube, like a clear glass cube yes. with one big Apple logo. That's all you see. There's no like, it's totally clear and see-through. But then when you go there, there's like a spiral staircase down and the whole store is underground. Yes. It's so cool. I went there at like 3 a.m. to get my headphones fixed after a show. And it's my favorite place on earth. I stayed for, I stayed until like 5 a.m. and like played with iPads and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they really do have weirdly fun games at the Apple store oh, yeah. while you're waiting. Oh, yeah. I worked at an Apple store when I was in college. <gasps> really? Yeah, and I loved playing on the games on the iPad, but my bo- anytime my boss, Jerry, uh, came on the floor, I had to pretend like I wasn't doing that. I was fixing All the it. time. <laughs> yeah. What I did, did they... you do in, in the Apple store? I literally, um, what I would do is I was basically just like a clerk. Like I could sell you stuff in the Apple store and also I could move over it was like part of the like the university center bookstore Mm. it was just like a little apple store that was there so it was like part of that and then also i could run like a few tests on your computer um but i couldn't give an official one drop of blood with one (laughs) dot i was there and i was (laughs) you you've seen the drop elizabeth holmes stole my idea yeah Have you seen, yeah. I haven't actually watched it yet. No. Have you listened to any it. of the Elizabeth Holmes podcasts? Honestly, all I know about her is that like she ran a huge scam and she got caught. That's yeah. literally the extent yeah. of my knowledge. But she needed a drop of blood. She had this this cock. We talked about it a little last week. She had this cockamamie idea that you need like. I was. I, can I just say I was like, is she about to say cockamamie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, does no one say this word anymore? <laughs> no. Nope. <laughs> what? The last person I've ever heard use that word genuinely was Don Rickles. <laughs> you know, I've always thought of myself as something of a Don Rickles impersonator. It was at the roast of Ronald Reagan. That video on YouTube. The same cockamamie music. That, 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 I, I remember the bit. They, they say I'm an excellent roast battler and it all started with Reagan. Are you secretly Don Rickles? <laughs> Are you? Zing! <laughs> gotcha. Sorry, go on. What oh, was yeah, cockamamie? She wanted to to take one drop of blood from your finger and run like a bunch of tests on it. The technology didn't work, but they still <laughs> wanted to like have it be like a billion dollar company. So instead of waiting the requisite 
10 years or so for them to actually figure this technology out. Thank you, Daddy. Uh, You're welcome, daughter. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, instead of waiting the 10 years, they like started running these tests on like actual just like regular lab machines and like pretending it was the drop of blood. It was kind of crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she's a real winner. Damn. Damn. What what can I say? She wanted to make money and she made money. She's have you, a winner. Have you ever had your uh Thetan level tested at a Scientology church? No. Oh, it's it's kind of fun. They give you like these tubes to hold on to and then they ask you questions about your past and then like a needle goes off and you're like, Oh, there's oh, there's something the, going the on there. Auditing. Yeah, 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 getting audited. So yeah. you've done it? Whoa. I, How deep did you go into like a basement or was it like No no no, it was on like the first level of like just there so you were like they're gonna let me out i'm not gonna get oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> kept well, in the basement or whatever it was do. i was with uh friends of mine from high school i think i was like 19 and uh we had tickets to go see avenue q and then but we had some just t we just had some time to kill in manhattan we were right next and we were to the church of scientology and we were like let's pretend to be interested let's see what happens i feel like just like, they're go, very nice to us go on after a second but i do feel like that is one of the rites of passage of being a child in new york oh yeah it's <laughs> just going to the church of scientology but i could never get myself to do it so it's pretty impressive what you're about to say yeah it's called bravery look it up um <laughs> but yeah no we went inside they showed us like this 15 minute uh dvd movie about like the life of l ron hubbard and i how have one seen that in like yeah. times square I came in and watched that, but I chickened out after that. Oh, yeah. What did you think okay. of the video, though? Sorry to cut you off. Oh, I'm a Scientologist now. Yeah. <laughs> it worked. They converted me. That's awesome. You know, it was, honestly, there was a guy standing behind us the whole time watching us watch it that I was so, like, freaked out by that I couldn't really focus. Whoa. But it was very entertaining. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, no, no. I, wait, wait. Can I ask you, like, what was the occasion that you decided to go there? Were you on your way, or did you just go out specifically to go there? I was, like, visiting New York with some friends, and we were like, we're going to go to Times Square, and we went to the Church of Scientology and the <laughs> M&M store. <laughs> oh, fuck yes. <laughs> the two... The real... two genders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think of the M&M store? Oh, it's wild. It almost Way more like... of a cult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like more of a religion than Scientology that there's like M&M slippers and stuff and like and now they have all the like like all the M&Ms have like like the orange one has anxiety like I've been since then and they mm. like change his font to be more squiggly and it's like oh my god thank you I feel so seen <laughs> just to make it more rushed <laughs> like, I'm so stressed <laughs> but it is I, I, I can't fathom being in a place in my life where I was like oh I need like orange m and m like oven mitts like it's just such a degree like i can't imagine someone going in there and being like oh i i wanted this yeah. like can you imagine someone who's like their house is completely decked out in that because i've i've seen people who they do that but with the royal family like every inch of their home what? is covered in royal family merch their plates have like princess diana and prince charles from their wedding day on it the, everything is just covered in british it. people yeah british people sometimes Whoa. american that's Sometimes. wild. I think the M and M's are something of a royal family, though. Yeah, because we don't have a royal family, we yeah. Except <laughs> we they're have, a... have the M and M's. Yeah. <laughs> except we elect them. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's democratically yeah. elected M and M's. The orange one has anxiety. Do any of the other ones have like conditions that you know of? They have like different person. Well, I think it was that. The green thing one's where, like... a borderline. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like my mother. <laughs> When my mother doesn't like someone, she like calls them a borderline. <laughs> oh my god, it's so fucked up. Just uh, she's a therapist, so just kidding. She doesn't actually do that, but mm. she does do that anyway. Uh, <laughs> so so the M and M. So what what do you, what personalities do they have? Honestly, all I remember is the orange one has anxiety, and the like. One of the ones that was like not by my own opinion, but kind of sexy before <laughs> they like made her less. They like gave her flat shoes, but then it's the whole thing where it turned out that like it turned out that they were like the M and M's are rebranding to be more like queer inclusive, which like it's so funny that when a corporation tries to do that, they were like, I was like, you just made her uglier. Like you're not. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, we gave her flat shoes. That's what being queer is, right? And I was like, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? But then it turns out they were like the chocolate brand had like some like child labor lawsuit and they were like we're rebranding to be more inclusive we recognize anxiety and androgynous identity and it was like 
you're literally like using child labor in the Congo, and this is like oh a god. like front to distract from that. Child labor will give you anxiety. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Maybe they're trying to represent. That's fucked up. <laughs> we all know the Mars Corporation is god awful. Yeah, they've been doing that like forever. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. All of those corporations still use child labor. They just outsource them. And what's crazy is that it's. Uh, also, how many chocolate companies also have like dangerous metals in the chocolate, like really? lead and shit? Like it's like, yeah, that's a crazy part. When you learn that like lint, like Lindor chocolate, is actually like it has like some high levels of stuff. We go. So I hear. We um, have to go protest the M M&M and M store. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> the Scientology store can stay. <laughs> yeah, they're not problematic, but <laughs> yeah, no. M and M's, it's fine. Yeah, lint uh, makes the metal taste so good, though. They do make it very Don't even, tasty. Yeah, that's really upsetting because lint is like the best tasting chocolate. So I'm like, yeah. if they have metals, what is like a? Wait, do you have a t- do you have a top tier uh, like top three uh, chocolate brands? Morals aside, yes. <laughs> yeah, no. Morals aside, purely on flavor, purely I don't flavor. Stand the company, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, peanut M and M's are my go-to. Okay. I love a peanut M and M. I love lint chocolate. It's like the little the balls with they have. Yeah, like, yeah, the little yeah, truffles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love those, but they're gonna come in number two just because incredible flavor. But you can't eat more than like three at a time before I'm yeah, like, this is too yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's gonna put them at two status. Three. We're just going chocolate candy. Uh, any just any chocolate brand, any chocolate company, any incarnation of chocolate that is your that you okay. like. Okay, I think three is maybe the the um Hershey's milk bar with the almonds in it. Mm. That's Ooh. those are like go tos. Okay, interesting. What about you, Gabby? I like the the Hershey's chocolate kisses. Those I'm are a, great. I'm a simple girl. Something about that shape. You just want to eat it. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I'm or not like joking. gently suckle at it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that was why. I like to motorboat them. I like to. <laughs> I just grab them. Out. <laughs> they do have giant ones that they sell at the M&M store. Oh, oh I've, I've been knowing about them <laughs> for a while. Ow, ow. <laughs> oh, yeah. They took them off the green M&M, actually. <laughs> Crazy, they did that. The green M&M got top search. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's inclusive. <laughs> She's recovering. Or is he's recovering. How fucking dare you? <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Okay, so wait. So Hershey's Kisses? <laughs> yes. Uh, Kit Kats. Big fan of Kit Kats. And you say you're not a boob guy. Are Kit Kats a boob thing? Oh no, I was talking about Hershey's oh, you're Kisses. Talking about the kisses. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, all right, so all right, so Hershey's Kisses, kisses Kit, Kit Kats. Kats and um <laughs> oh man uh settle down <laughs> yeah i'm just manic today i don't oh, know yeah. what's going on um i really like godiva stuff Ooh. You know, i don't even know that I, as soon as you said that i was like the brand image is burned in my head from every walgreens i've ever been in yeah, yeah but yeah, i don't yeah. know that i've ever actually tried it I also, they're kind of one of those companies. There's also like shittier iterations of those companies that have the boxes of chocolates where, as Forrest Gump says, you never know what you're going to get, but they're all good. Yeah. The ones you pull it out, you don't know if it's going to be a cherry chocolate or a vanilla chocolate Mm. or. I don't like, I don't like cherries or strawberries. Any kind of red berry fruit mixed with chocolate. No, no, no. For me. Uh, Really? I do not like those. I disagree. Yeah. Oh, I, I understand. I know that I'm the minority here. I know that. Uh, in more ways than one. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, I never like those. I never like that combination. I'm a big fan. Okay, so for me, my favorite kind of chocolate in the world, um, at number one, just Cadbury milk chocolate is my favorite. I It's the most delicious thing. I love it. Uh, number two, I'm going to go with a Terry's chocolate orange. Oh, so good. I've have you never, ever had? I don't. Please, I please enlighten me. I have some. I can get some for you right now. <laughs> you said it like oh, yeah. it was done. <laughs> this is very yeah, like threatening. Okay. Yeah. I know a guy. It's yeah. the cashier <laughs> at the chocolate store. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> All you got to do is exchange money and then he'll give you the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of a covert arrangement. Yeah. Um, have you guys ever had Smarties? Yes. Like the. They're like bigger M&Ms. They're so good. They're chocolate? Yeah, they're chocolate. Wait, I'm thinking of Smarties that are like a fruit thing that are like- No, 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 no. They're, yeah, you're they're... thinking of Wonka. 
but Smarties yeah, yeah, yeah. are like slightly. D- they have them in mm. South Africa. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. You can get them also in Canada, the UK, they, and you can get them here as well. But that's oh, no. I would say that was like my favorite thing to eat as a kid. Uh, mm-hmm. Smarties, just you get them in like a little paper tube, and you it, they're so good. Let me get you some uh, of a Terry's chocolate orange. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I am very excited to have you try. Wait, These is this are- the orange one? These are the Smarties. I don't know if you can see from here. Oh, I've seen those before. I think I just thought they were like fruit flavor. I thought they were like Skittles. There's more than meets the eye. Wow. Never judge a book by its cover. Never judge a candy by its uh, sugary outer coating. <laughs> <laughs> by its shape. You know what I always thought was overrated is Mike and Ike's. Okay. Oh my gosh. Thank take you. A, take a slice. <gasps> it's shaped like a... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I took yeah, two. No, one, like, oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. Awesome. It's shaped like an orange slice. Oh, yeah. So, live on the pod. Let me know what you think. Oh, my gosh. Isn't yeah. it amazing? Yeah. Yeah. That is so good. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm going to lean away so I'm not just like... <laughs> <laughs> this is now ASMR. This is an <laughs> ASMR podcast. Sponsored by the Terry's Chocolate Orange. I honestly didn't think... I usually hate like orange flavor, mm. but in the chocolate, it's really good. It works. Mm-hmm. For some reason, it works. Do you not like oranges themselves? No. Whoa. I used to like, I would like walk into a Jamba Juice when I was a kid and like gag. Like I like viscerally hated citrus flavors. I don't know why. What are, are there any other foods that do that for you? Olives. They don't really make me gag in the same way. They're just like, I hate them. Oh yeah, I'm not a fan of olives Like olives, anchovies, but I feel like that's more predictable. People Mm. like don't like those. I mean, a lot of people do, but I, people, you say that and people are like, oh, I get yeah. it. Freaks do. You yeah. gotta get on the Chovy train. Hmm. For real, you're a fan? Mm-hmm. I used to have to wow. open them at a restaurant I worked at to like put them on a salad. And I was like, oh my God, would this you? This is the grossest thing. It was so nasty. Yeah. No offense. None, none taken. I understand not everyone is on this train. Hey, Gabby, has anyone told you you're a freak? Many times. <laughs> well, you're going to hear it one more <laughs> you're time. You're going to hear it once again. Wait, what, so are there any other things? That are like, okay, this is not a taste, but like a, um, a like cloth on drywall. Ooh. You know, like the one, people have like those one feeling that like, that mm. just, gives, that's like nails a on a chalkboard thing, to me. Textural thing. Yeah. Drywall cloth combo is like nails on a chalkboard to me. Like it's worse to me. Or, Wait, just like rubbing cloth on drywall? Yeah. Oh, okay. I hate it. Oh, like you yeah, we'll thinking about it makes me like cross. <laughs> okay. 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 Or like. Or like rubbing a napkin together. Ooh, Ooh yeah. it like literally, it's so upsetting to me. But nails on chalkboard is like not as bad to me. Are okay. you remembering That's that? Because my... I know at restaurants, like the way that they used to clean, like I think they outlawed it, except in like some places still do it under the table. You take like that rag, you know, the restaurant cleaning rag. Yeah, oh, the for wa- cleaning down tables. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for cleaning everything. The oh, rag yeah. is mo- the rag clean. My sister yourself. Used to- yeah. <laughs> yeah, you take a sponge bath. <laughs> <laughs> My sister used to work at an ice cream shop, and they were like about to get shut down for like, health code violations. But it had nothing to do with the cleanliness of the store. It had to do with improper storage and stuff. But somehow the owner got it in his mind that it was about the cleanliness, and he mm. was like, every single second that she wasn't taking an order, he would be like, pick up the rag, <laughs> and she would have to just clean something. With the rag that you dip in that toxic liquid. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Yoy. For me, the um, I'm trying to think of like foods and textures that like are sensations that like just really jar me. For food, bananas. I cannot really? stand the texture, the flavor, everything about bananas. I hate gay people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> textures. I don't like the feeling of a gay man in my butt, <laughs> <laughs> or just in my presence. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> All those mics you go to must be so weird. I know. So many of our friends. I hate them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, but bananas, I, I liked them up until I was about seven or eight. And then one day I just ate a banana. I was like, Ugh, and I just, from that day forward, just my taste changed. Wow. Just out of nowhere. It's because they put metals in them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't take banana slander on this pod. Really? Oh, so are you a big fan of bananas? I'm a big, uh, they provide the necessary potassium that you need to carry you, forward with your day. You can, I've never met someone who didn't like bananas. Really? I feel like that's not like a polarizing food. I that. actually was, I was talking about this with a few other comedians. They all had the same experience around the same age. 
This is a this is not uncommon. Okay, well, wow. Louis C.K.'s opinions don't matter anymore. Only to me. Uh, <laughs> um, I was talking to Louis Cosby, <laughs> Harvey Weinstein, and Dave Schmell. Yeah, Harvey's trying out stand up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You keep yourself he needs his walker, but he's, he's tries anyway. Oh my god, the walker was so fake. Remember that photo yeah. of Harvey Weinstein with the fucking walker? Oh, I remember. Oh yeah. I what just... it's? <laughs> we were just like, oh, he's really going for it. Just like, <laughs> what a fucking moron! It's like you ever see the episode of Always Sunny where Charlie like thinks that he's gotten that medicine to make him super smart, and he comes on and he's like, well, well. <laughs> 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 very similar oh, vibes yeah. which actually reminds me to ask you did you have any so you started comedy really young do you have any like super early like comedic influences or yes. like any art in general that you like really liked as a kid you know what i was obsessed with was like morgan murphy do you know her i don't oh. know morgan Murphy. she had like a special on netflix for a while i think she like writes more for tv now but she had a special on netflix for well she does stand up but her special like got taken off of netflix i don't think it was like a scandal i think it just like yeah. i don't know it's not on there anymore but it's on spotify she is so good and so like um i don't know she was she, she's she's really really great and like i'm trying to think of like a bit like i saw her at the stand recently and was like I, i'm like mesmerized by her yeah but i also remember like uh, when you were talking about like being like a comedy nerd like as a kid yeah, yeah, like yeah. once i started doing stand-up i would like go <laughs> somewhere but i would like go on like snl monologues and like diagram them and be like how does this like trying to understand like the mechanism of how it worked like i there's like old notebooks somewhere where it's like me like copying down someone's speech and like drawing arrows to be like try to like you know mathematically understand how jokes work oh this is like the stuff we nerd out on as well and it's so hard to explain to other people because to other people like the joy of funny is that it's so effortless and so to like hear comedy explained didactically everyone else was like well surely you can't be funny if you do that but like that's all it is that's I've, so interesting I, I wanted a big kick uh for a while of like video essays on like how this comedian sets up a premise yes. like those kinds of things and i i lapped those up i was like tell me everything i need a i love yeah. those so much yeah yeah i saw a bunch of those like uh like obviously like not as huge a fan of louis ck but i was a huge fan growing up and i and i watched a few on like especially like his jazan the puss bit about like yeah. how he like sets up a bit and just like follows it through and hits and it was yeah i i loved it so much i love it what were your diagrams <laughs> was it it was like just joke structure yeah, it was like this topic and then be like, oh, this topic branches off into this, which has a joke here, which has a joke here. And then at the end of it, you zoom out and you're like, OK, so they covered four topics, but they had like five jokes about each one. It's stuff now that I'm like, yeah, they, it was jokes like <laughs> now. Yeah. It's yeah, so yeah, simple. Yeah. It wasn't this big like revelation, but just of being like, because, you know, when you start, you're like so like it's such a mystery that I was like just literally the simple concept of like, oh, they touched three topics. They have like a few jokes about each, and then at the end, it kind of ties back to the beginning. Right. I was like, "Whoa, dude, that's crazy!" And yeah. now I'm like, "Yeah, it's pretty simple." But I think it's the equivalent of like learning the scales in a musical instrument. Mm. Mm. I think it's just like learning like how to just go da 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 da, -da and like, but in like concepts that you have to. I think that's what you have to do in any art form is that you have to like learn the scales before you can like fly freely and like improvise and stuff. That's such oh, yeah. a good comparison. Because, yeah, you you have to understand, like, the very, very basics of it. Mm. And I think also it was, like, I would maybe have, like, I'd be like, oh, this line is so funny. But you can't just focus on that one phrasing was funny. You have to know the structure around it that, like, leads to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Was there any similar influence for you being a theater kid? Or, like, anyone in film or TV that was like, oh, I want to get up on stage? Not even for but just in general or just built that attraction for you do you, do you ever see the puffy chair no what is it that was, do you know the duplass brothers yeah yeah they did this like really low budget movie about like this guy who finds it's like this whole it's about like family relationships and stuff but he finds this chair that his dad used to have on ebay and the whole plot of the movie is me my i think fiance and my brother are gonna drive up buy this chair and bring it back for my dad <laughs> that's the whole movie that's and it awesome. like it escalates to such weird places but it's so like 
it it looks like they filmed it like you know in a backyard just like with the camera and i feel like because that gap was bridged it was just kind of like oh you can just make stuff right you know and it can still be really good or like they have this incredible short film um have you seen this is john no. no, I don't know this. It's so good. And it made it into Sundance. And it's like so funny because it literally looks like it was filmed like on a potato. Like it's like <laughs> so bad. But um, it's just this guy trying to set up his answering machine. And he has like an existential crisis about like who he is. And he's like <laughs> at the end of it, he's like, I'm. I am John. <laughs> it's like it's like at one point he like puts on sunglasses to try to like make it sound cooler. Like oh my it's God. so funny. But they're so good at like I was really obsessed with them because they would take these really, really simple concepts and draw it out to this like existential identity thing of like it is just about a chair or it's just about Whoa. an answering machine. Yeah, the Duplasses, they like made they started making movies young. And now when they talk at colleges, they're like, just make it on an iPhone. Like we didn't have that. Like just do it. Which is one of those things I'm like that I don't know if I could just do it, but like a lot of people can. <laughs> so I guess it's good advice for other people. It would be funny if you like you finished your grad school program. You were like, I don't think I can do anything. Just like, <laughs> yeah. I have no faculties available to me. Just <laughs> I mean, I still do have a lot of self doubt, like in school, because like you like go in with your material, and then like obviously the idea is to like make it the best it can be, but that means mm. like every little detail is gonna get picked apart. Are you in, in a grad program for film school? Yeah, yeah. I'm in a, a program specifically for television writing. But we oh, do like cool. some film writing stuff as well. Oh, yeah. yeah I was so I was one of her actors for a scene that she had to direct. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. Was he good? He actually, he was great. <laughs> Thank you. I, knew I had a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It was a fun day. That's he so was cool. my uh, slightly against type Troy Bolton. I, I did a scene from Hell High yeah, School dude. Musical. You know the scene when they're on the roof and Gabriella comes up and is like, do you remember kindergarten when you could just be yourself? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just want to admit, I've seen this movie I, like five times. You know what's funny is that I was looking in your face and I could see you were just like, I'm really trying to remember. I'm really trying. You're, you're like, the I really was. I remember like the Duplasses, they really create this existential crisis. I'm like, but Kenny Ortega did a great job at HSM 3. You, when did you last watch High School Musical? I watched a YouTube video of it maybe like a little while ago because there was some meme, meme about Zac Efron and the thing on the golf course. And I was like, how cheesy is this if I go back and actually watch it? But I, since I actually sat down and watched the whole movie, probably like years. Wow. Have you watched it Maybe recently? like a decade-ish. So, or... it it's on the TV, actually. You guys are halfway oh, through it right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> right now. Did you watch any other DCOMs? Disney Channel original movies. <laughs> I was like, you're going to have to clarify that term for me. <laughs> oh, that made me so happy that you didn't know that. Because <laughs> I didn't know what that meant until college. A DCOM, I was like, what? Is that is that like a military acronym? I was like, I don't know what Does that it is. Does mean Disney comedy? Disney, Disney Channel, Channel original, original movie. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I would not have guessed that. Um, uh, I was definitely like a Disney kid more than a Nick kid. Oh, I was so much more of a Nick kid. Nick and uh, Cartoon Network. That oh, was that's so much cooler. That's a cooler kid to be. I was like Hannah Montana. It, oh, Nick loved kid. Hannah Montana. I went to a Hannah Montana concert in the second grade, and it was the best day of my life. And one of the Jonas Brothers did a backflip off the piano. <laughs> which Jonas? And I was brother? awakened sexually. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Wait, which Jonas were you into? Uh, you know, okay, this is this is. And an, who was the one that did the backflip? I think it was Nick. Okay. I think it was Nick. It was Nick or Joe. There's no way it was Kevin. There's no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is maturity. I think is I used to think Nick was the cute one, and then as I've gotten older, I was like, you know what, Joe actually has like a real charm to him. Kevin, I'm I'm so sorry, but it's just it's not gonna happen. I mean, none of it's gonna happen. I'm not gonna. <laughs> they're not like courting me, but. But if Kevin made a move, you'd be like, slow down, bitch. Just. <laughs> I know you're like a multimillionaire, but. I'm good. <laughs> I want to get on this podcast whoever like the one or two people in the world are who are like actually Kevin is the hottest person <laughs> in the world to me. That would be good. I guess it's his so wife. mean because it's not even like he's ugly. Like he's not bad looking, I don't yeah. think. No. You know what's also weirder? There's a fourth Jonas brother. <gasps> that is crazy. He's younger, right? Yeah, he's yeah. younger. And is and he was like really ignored by like 
a lot of people like his fa- he had like a lot of internal shit going on while his brothers were just mega famous that's so sad. I know. Yeah. That's is he like a celebrity now? Is, is he I don't think so. Oh, certainly not. I'm sure he works at like an advertising agency. He works agency. at a Foot Locker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, working to do backflips with his new shoes. <laughs> yeah. That's so sad. Yeah. Did you see the Jonas Family Roast? No. I saw a few clips from it. It actually looked really funny. Did they have comedians on it, or was it all just like Jonas? There were brothers? some comedians. It was basically the way that a Comedy Central roast works now, where they have like some celebrities with ghostwriters come mm. in and they do a roast, and then some actual comics. Yeah. So the comics they had were Lily Singh, who was great. Mm. Um, I I don't always love her work, but I mean she was cool. really good in this roast. All right, good. Pete Davidson was Pete Davidson, Keenan Thompson, admirable host. Who else did they Wow, have? so it was like a real investment. Yeah, they... Yeah, they had like real comics. On. There's some comic I'm forgetting who was also on it, but now I can't remember her. And then they had all the wives roast the brothers. They mm. had like Priyanka do something. They had... Sophie Turner. Sophie Turner had the best roast of the night by yeah. far. And it's because she had like sauce. Priyanka had good writers, but she was really nervous. Sophie, I really like. Anytime I see her on TV, she's always so charming. She's really funny. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, I think she's... I. I I think she can do better than Joe. <laughs> I, I am kind of obsessed with her too. I went okay. So this is I also went to a Jonas Brothers concert more recently with my cousins, like two years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Sophie Turner was like in the audience, and I was like, oh, she's like, like we like saw her down in the pit, and it was like, oh, she's like stunning in person. Like wow. I feel like she's like one of those celebrities where you're like, you see a picture of them, and you're like, oh yeah, celebrities are pretty, but then you see yeah. them in person, and you're like, oh, you're like a different like species you're so beautiful yeah, like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. my dad had that experience with Shaq just being like oh you're bigger than I was ever expecting <laughs> he was he met Shaq once and he was like oh I he was like I knew that he was tall but I wasn't he just wasn't prepared for just how gargantuan he is wow yeah how I, tall is he like seven feet he's I think he's like seven feet yeah wow yeah seeing like a one of my best friends growing up this kid I hung out with when I was like three years old he grew up to be 6'8". Whoa. I know, God. like, you know, girls love a tall guy or whatever. But, like, when I see him now, like, the way that I have to crane my neck, <laughs> it actually is, like, like I wouldn't date a 6'8 guy. It's not, a, it's not a pleasant experience to always have to look up like that. Yeah. Granted, he's a wonderful person and still a very close friend of mine. <laughs> but it's just the point is, like, seeing a person that tall IRL, you feel like you're seeing someone mythical. What if the only way that you could look eye to eye is if he goes, mm, just like... <laughs> yeah, he has to look. Oh, sorry. Did you want to say something? <laughs> <laughs> they like, never say anything until... <laughs> yeah, well, Can I ask, like, who was, like... Uh, was it... was the Were the Jonas Brothers, like, your sexual awakening? The first time you were, like, really into someone that you saw on screen or something? Honestly, no. Okay, you know who was? Yes. Is uh, uh, Robert Pattinson as Cedric Diggory. Uh, that okay. was... That was a doozy. And then him in Twilight, like both of those. Oh, and yeah. him now still he continues to this day. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's maturing like a fine wine. Did oh, you yeah. See Batman yet? <laughs> What'd seen? you say? Did you see Batman yet? I did. Okay, but I fucked up. I accidentally bought 4DX tickets to Batman. Oh, my God. So the seats are like shaking the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> There's like air that blasts every time a gunshot whoa. goes off. Even when they're like rounding a corner, the chairs are like, whoa. <laughs> it was uh, so distracting. Oh There's my a God. button on the seat that says water on or off. <laughs> and I don't think people knew to turn Would it, it off. Would it spray water at you? Yeah, there was one point, like, you no know, no spoilers, but there was a big water scene and like, <laughs> You saw, like, you could see it backlit by the screen. It was like water just came over the whole. It was crazy. So I honestly couldn't focus on the movie. But goddamn, I was very interested. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's nuts. But did you have a good experience watching the movie? Otherwise, no, it was horrible. <laughs> oh no! I the movie. The, I thought the movie was good, but I truly was like so distracting. Like, oh, okay, okay. The okay. mechanics okay. of the chair were like loud too. Like it wasn't even good. Oh, Every time okay, I moved, okay. it was like. Eh, eh. The people in front of us, their chairs got <laughs> stuck on an angle. <laughs> <laughs> they just sat no! like that the whole movie. Just watching, just at an angle for the rest of it. <laughs> just like this is great. He's hot. It's like. <laughs> I think the problem is you can't do that with serious movies. Like, the Batman is meant to be this gritty whatever. Imagine Schindler's List 4DX. (laughs) (laughs) 
Smoke on or off? <laughs> oh my god! Jesus Is that gas? But I, I remember seeing Spy Kids in 3D. That would be great. That would be cool. I mean, yeah. they didn't have the Love stupid Spy effects Kids. yet. That shit was like fun. You had the glasses on and then it would like fly at Literally, you. Literally, the glasses are right there. The 3D the glasses? Wait, really? Can I see you guys in 3D? From Spy Kids specifically? Spy Kids. <gasps> no Wait, way. What? Yeah. Those oh are my actually gosh. from Spy Kids These 3? These are actually from Spy Kids 3. What up? Oh my god, this is like bringing back memory. Like this is like, I'm like a sleeper cell agent. You just like <laughs> awoke me with that. That's crazy. Yeah, Do you, you have a favorite of the Spy Kids franchise? Literally, look at the inside. Spy Kids. Yeah. Oh yeah. It hurts when you're not doing it the way it's supposed to be done. Wait, whoa! Take these glasses and log on to SpyKids.com, where the 3D adventure continues. Should we do it? Oh my god! Oh my god! Like... <laughs> oh, my oh, oh, oh. oh SpyKids.com. This so is many... gonna be terrible for the audio version. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many websites like that that are like websites from childhood. That there was like this old, you know, remember the remember Phil of the Future? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. do I ever? They had this game on like I don't know Disney's website or something where it was like Fill of the Future and there were these different pipes and it was like a puzzle and you had to connect them. Mm. Do you ever play that? Oh, I I I don't know if I did that game, but I remember those kinds of games. Yeah. I was obsessed with it. Like my family would like crowd around like and we would like all try to solve it. And then like years later, we were like, whatever happened to that game? And I ended up like it literally took like an hour of digging and I found like a thread on like a subreddit for like Fill of the Future where someone was like. I like restored the CSS of the <gasps> game here and I played it again and I almost cried. <laughs> oh my God. It's like 10 years ago. I remember but, uh, there was, it was like an, almost like an early iteration of like, do you remember Flappy Bird? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was like that, but for Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire where he was trying to avoid the fire of the, of the. Goblet? Uh, of, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say the dragon, but yes. I don't um, know how that movie works. But it was like, the, and I loved those games so much. I loved also the Cartoon Network games were amazing. There was a great were, Kim, uh, uh, Kim There was Possible. a great Samurai Jack one. Samurai Jack had an amazing game on the Cartoon Network website. The, all those websites were great. They, they were so good. Kim Possible had a good, like, um like game that was kind of like you know on blackberry you can play the kind of like games where you break the bricks brick breaker yes yeah yeah, yeah yeah i know that one they had one like for kim possible but it like it wasn't really any cool graphics you could just play as like kim against shigo oh kind of hot <laughs> yeah I'm talking that's about... where that's how you became a lesbian yes <laughs> i was converted by the way spykids.com does not uh, work anymore <laughs> I think That's they have, have you ever tried? I'm gonna jump out the fucking window. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can I tell you? We regret to inform you all that Maddie has died. <laughs> I have a bunch of like uh, VHSs of like shows that my parents taped from like the early 2000s, and you see like those old commercials, like call this number for Zoo Books, and like it was. <laughs> and I, I once tried calling that number just to see what would happen. I was hoping it would be just one guy going, "Hello, <laughs> no one's called me in years." <laughs> <laughs> I'm trapped. Like, <laughs> I wanted that to happen, but there was nothing. He nothing was born on the there. He's yeah. gonna die there. He's, <laughs> He's left alone. The, but that's like the person whoever is running the Danimal sweepstakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> those things. Have to, do you remember that? Oh yeah, the, the the win a trip with like Zach and Cody. Mm. <gasps> we that, those aren't their real names, <laughs> Dylan and Cole. <laughs> yeah, how dare you? One of them has facial hair now, and I hate it. Really? I don't remember which Sprouse You look it so is. genuinely scared by the notion <laughs> of that. It's really, it's... <gasps> no! Hold on, let me... I want to pull up a picture just to show you. So... Cole Sprouse is like a real artsy, like, NYU film photography cool guy now, I think. Yeah. He was on Riverdale. He has that iconic monologue. I don't think I've seen it. It's the one where he, Boom. he goes, <gasps> oh shit. Oh my God. <laughs> is that... Dylan. Wow! Oh, yeah, Wait, Dylan is has it? a mustache. Oh yeah, like he's uh, like, like he like saw you across the room and mustache. liked your vibe. <laughs> yeah, I really wanted to get uh, which one is it that has the meadery that makes mead? Dylan. Now? Dylan. Yeah, I really wanted to get some of his mead, but it's very hard to get a bottle. Well, he has mead. Yeah, he has a meadery. He makes mead. I didn't even know. I thought mead was just old beer. I actually didn't know. <laughs> That it was a separate thing. I thought it was just what people called beer it's like, it's, before it's, electricity. It's like wine. <laughs> I must have my mead. No water. It's like it's basically like wine, but made from honey. 
whoa. Yeah. It's delicious. It's so good. It's so funny when like celebrities like start like a company that has nothing to do with like. Yeah. You know, like, like. <laughs> George Clooney is tequila. So do um uh Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul. They for like a te- bourbon or some kind of alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Ryan Reynolds has mint mobile. He like a cell phone thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. AOC has a congresswoman position. <laughs> she also has RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, she was kind of a good judge on it. She was a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah, oh my god! Was. They <laughs> RuPaul has started like bringing people in <laughs> to be the judges. Who Imagine like- Bernie on on RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> You look absolutely snatched. <laughs> I'm gagging. <laughs> no, seriously. Someone give me CPR. <laughs> if it would please the rest of the judges, I'd like the library to be open. <laughs> they have people on RuPaul who have no business being a judge there, like Cara Delevingne. I hate her. I'm sorry. Really? Why do you hate Cara Delevingne? What did she ever do to you? She's so like, oh, I'm such a quirky Australian girl. Get a light. She's English. Even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a celebrity you arbitrarily hate? Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh my gosh, that is a good question. Nothing... I don't know if you could answer that because you're like famous and maybe you'll work with them someday. Oh <laughs> I was like, oh sorry, I can't trash George Clooney. I'm pretty close to him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't. Nobody really comes to mind, but I'm sure there is somebody. Do you guys have one? I can't think of someone off the top of my head. Um, We've spoken at length about Chloe Grace Moretz. And wait, I do. For her. I will say I do have a celebrity vendetta, but I cannot share it on the podcast. I'll tell you afterwards. Oh wow! Um, because it's insider it's, gossip. Oh yeah, there is some insight, but uh, it's it is a celebrity who. You know, I'll tell the story, but I won't say who it is. Okay. Well, well yeah, it, yeah. You told this on the Gus episode, but tell it again. Oh yeah, I'll tell it again. Yeah, I'll tell yeah. it again. So um. Uh, give me the name of someone anyway, just so I can use their name instead. A celebrity? Yeah, just a random person so I can... Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. All right, let's pretend it's Who's Danny. Who's amazing, okay. by the way. Who's yeah, the who sweet... we all love. Who? That is honestly, if I met Danny DeVito, I would probably lose the ability to speak because I would just be like, God, I would be like, you're so amazing. Like, he's just, he's such, he had such a huge influence on everyone for so long. Uh, yeah. At my roast battle yesterday, oh, my opponent this is a great d- joke. made a joke that brought the house down where she said, Gabby looks like if Tim Burton and drew Danny DeVito. That's so funny. It's phenomenal. It's oh such God. a good joke. I had a roast against my friend Vishal and he called me Lena Well Done Ham. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, I know Vishal. He you comes do? to my mic. He's I hilarious. S- oh my gosh, yeah, he's the best. I saw that roast battle and I was like, what the fuck? I was... <laughs> It, was, it just blew me away. You both were so funny. Oh, it was so It's fun because we've known each other since, like, we started comedy together. So I've known him for, like, seven years. Wow. Like, wow. We started in North Carolina together. Damn. Was he also, did he also start as a teenager then? I think he was, like, 18. I was 16. Yeah, we're, okay. like, around the same time. Wait, then do you also know Maddie Gross? Yeah, Maddie Gross is also one of my, like, old old friends. Oh, oh damn. Yeah. That's am- I'm roasting them in May. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. I, I mean, can't I'm, wait. Maddie's so funny. I'm intimidated. Oh, yeah. They're, like, a really good writer. That's yeah. going to be awesome. Yeah. Anyway, my yeah, story, sorry, my story. story, my story. So I, um, I, was, I was working at an art exhibit in early 2019. Uh, and on its big opening night, uh, me and my coworkers, we like rotated shifts, but at one point in the night, I had a list of all the VIPs and you would come up and you would say, hello, my name is Waddy, uh, Maddie Wiener. And I would say, oh yes, I see your name on the list. I would give you a wristband. It was honestly, it was just like this. It was just like this. It was like a sort of like a charity wristband type material. I thought you were going to hold up the Spy Kids glasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was just like this. I would wrap this around your... Um, but I would I would give you a wristband that's, that says, like, I'm a VIP. Let me into all the other stuff. And then I would say, all right, enjoy the exhibit. You'd say thank you and you'd go inside. So Danny DeVito walks right up to me and he just goes... That was for audio listeners. That was Lucas. That was me. Putting out his hand as I if just to say, kiss the out. ring. Exactly like that. And did not say a word. And I was just waiting there for about 10 seconds before I realized, oh, he wants me to put the the wristband on his wrist. So I had to like oh, stretch God. it out, which is hard to do with a wristband. Like, But I put it on somehow. And then I was like, oh, I, was, I was just... I couldn't I couldn't compute what had just happened. Um 
But I was like, all right, enjoy the exhibit. And then he just walked right inside, did not once look at me, did not once say thank nothing. Just walked straight inside. Wow. I'll tell you who it is after uh, after we record. Are you disappointed to learn it was not Danny DeVito? I, if it was Danny DeVito, I, I would jump out the window again. <laughs> I would again. <laughs> yeah, you already did it. <laughs> but yeah, that, that happened to me. And that was... I'm still a little, I'm still so surprised by it. Yeah. It's so disappointing too when famous people are like not cool. But yeah. then it's also really nice when they are cool and you're like, oh, you're still oh, like a yeah. normal cool person. Someone who I hear is actually really cool and very respectful, Frances McDormand. She is. Really? Yeah. I, I see that vibe. Super respectful to uh, waiters and uh, it like ticks really well. That's the best litmus test. Yeah. yeah. Do you, yeah. Uh, have you had any encounters with celebrities where you're like, oh, this person's awesome? I just met Sam J last night and I was like, <gasps> she's I, th- I mean i think she's like brilliant and so I, I just think she's brilliant but she was like so nice and cool and like you know that's what i mean awesome. you can tell when like people are like really like look at you when they talk to you and yes. i was like oh, oh you don't good. you don't have to be nice to me at all but you are because you're just like yeah she was so cool that's um, wonderful she's beyond gifted my girlfriend yeah. and i quote the bag bit to each other all because she overpacks like that she'll like she'll bring like actually like five bags on a trip and like she'll like ship two of them out before we go so we're always like i can't let my baby struggle <laughs> <laughs> gotta get these back <laughs> she's a sam j oh, is fucking God. amazing uh, so yeah who else nikki glazer is so nice too oh she's i met her like, she's so yeah. nice yeah yeah she's the best right she's like she's so cool and she like it's so nice to young college. comics too she came yeah. to your she came to your college she did a gig at hunter college and i like went up to her after i was like by the way like i've loved your stuff for a while like you're hilarious she was so sweet i was like i noticed you even like changed up the wording on one of your jokes and she was like yeah i just did that out of nowhere i think i've got to keep that right Aww. she was like so like willing to like talk shop with this like so a- nice. adoring fan or whatever. her show on comedy central not safe is so underrated it was so funny. Dude, the episode where her, I think it's her and Sarah Schaefer are like sitting on vibrators. Yes. Comedians with vibrators trying to drink coffee. It was, and it's- <laughs> it was so funny. And like their safe word to like get her to stop was Theon Greyjoy. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, but the, then they had like a recurring thing where they would, uh, it was Nikki would bring another comedian on to feed lines to porn stars filming a live scene. And it was, I've shown that to so many people because to this day it is one of like probably the top five funniest things that I've ever seen on YouTube. Oh you gotta show that to us off the. Oh, I will afterwards. Camera. Like I'll pull one up because it's it's so funny. It was such a good show. It made me so mad that it only had like two seasons. It made me so mad. It yeah. was so good. That's how I felt about Michelle Wolf's uh, Netflix like late night show. I don't know if you ever saw it. I haven't seen it actually. It was one season, and I don't know. I think Michelle Wolf is such an amazing like political comic because oh, she's great i she's one of those people who like will you know she did the what is it the inaugural dinner or whatever white house correspondence dinner sure yeah. yeah and everyone was like mad at her for making jokes that were really good <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> but about I think sarah huckabee sanders yeah she got oh, yeah. famous off of that in the exact neoliberal circles who are not her audience so I think mm. that's been the mm. issue in her career. But like she is one of the best comics working today. I yeah. Think. yeah. She used to have this amazing joke about Ben Carson where she was like, he, uh, <laughs> Michelle Wolf was like, he is famous. <clears throat> excuse me. He's famous for separating two twins who were like conjoined at birth, but he looks like the type of guy who would sew two babies together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. <laughs> so good. You know who uh, else would sew two babies together? Our submitters, our listeners. Our listeners. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is the worst transition we've done yet. <laughs> Are you ready to give advice to children? Oh, my gosh. Are they actually? <laughs> sometimes the, we, uh, we very often get uh, people in like high school and sometimes in middle school writing Aww. it with like very sweet, often like uh, issues with romance. Um, it's very, very sweet. I have one pulled up that I can uh, that I can read. Okay, go for it. I'm sorry that I like screenshotted these weird. Okay, but some, but it, very often it's like also like people with like a weird phobia or a weird or just like a funny story or anything. Anyway, so if five fish and seven birds were at the exact same spot at the exact same time, what would be the area of a square? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I was, was gonna nice. say, would they fight? <laughs> do you think? Who do you think would win in a fight between a fish and a bird? 
I mean, I th- Wait, I'm pretty sure birds eat fish. Where, <laughs> what is the arena and what is the environment that they're fighting in? Is it above water? Is it underwater? Oh, true. This is very important. Yeah, a bird would win underwater. Exactly. Okay, well, that, that's, the, that's the one scenario, I think, where the fish might prevail. Exactly. And in that case, the square is a lot bigger. <laughs> Unless they were... <laughs> <laughs> Squares the size of the ocean. <laughs> Only 5% of which we What if we explored. put both of them in space and then everyone loses? <laughs> 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 I don't even want to think about how big the square would be that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have another actual one. Okay. I'm um, glad we solved that for yeah. this person. Okay. So I have a dilemma. I love my girlfriend and she loves me, but I have a couple of concerns. She is very assertive. We're both girls and I'm not abs- assertive. So, okay. So they're both girls. Girlfriend is assertive. The person who's writing in, not assertive. Uh, she gets involved in things she doesn't need to. And she escalates dumb situations. She's very smart, but she always assumes I'm weak mentally and physically. She doesn't take me seriously. I remember her getting pissy when I ended up in charge of a situation, and it went well. We met in a production, and she is so caring, and I can tell she loves me. Also, a bit of humor. Her love language is physical contact, but she doesn't wear deodorant, and I have no idea how to tell her that she might want to wear deodorant. (laughs) Whew, there's a lot going on here. What do you think? I think... It uh, it depends on if when 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 you're like oh she thinks that I'm weak does it make you feel weak mm. because if you're internalizing that if you're like being around her makes me feel weak or makes me feel not as strong yeah, then I would good. say yeah that's not a situation you want to be in no I had the same thought actually like yeah. I feel like it can also be an insecurity where like someone's doing something pretty normal but you are like internalizing your own insecurity and you're like, am I weak for this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it can be a, but either way, I think if your instinct is leading you to be like, I don't want to be with this person, then it's probably not the right. Fit. Yeah. I think it, yeah, it's about like listening to your own instincts. Do you feel free in the relationship? If you feel just like through the course of like on a date or at whatever, hanging out, if you feel like you, can't do things that you otherwise would want to do or that you know you can do then that's a reason to like bring it up be like hey we have an issue um yeah yeah because i think hopefully you want to be in a relationship with someone who sees you as you know maybe Capable. even a better version of yourself than you realized you are like you want it you want it to elevate your self-image you know yes um and if it's bringing you down at all it's like it's not how you want to feel yeah Unless you actually suck, in which case you need to stick with this person who keeps you in check. Um, I wonder if the listener will be like, oh, right, I do suck. I forgot about that. Oh. <laughs> Fine. All right, hit us. Okay. Um, hi, I'm a big fan of the pod. Thank you. And I'm writing in to get some advice. What if we had like added that part in <laughs> to like impress you? Hi, I think you're the coolest people in the entire world, and I actually pray to you every night. <laughs> My question <laughs> in this essay, I will attempt. <laughs> like, Nothing one of the person, but it would be funny if you added that into every question. <laughs> yeah. I should have clarified. I'm not shitting on this person for liking you. I'm saying it would be funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if every single time <laughs> we get. It. Every, it added like five minutes to every question <laughs> i recently quit my job to go back to community college i withdrew at the start of lockdowns here and i'm super blessed to be supported by family where i'm able to just focus on getting an education right now however this leaves me with a lot of free time and no clue how to spend it i actually just turned 21 over two weeks ago and i'm excited to be able to go out to bars clubs and events Unfortunately, I don't have any friends to go out with. I had a crazy weird high school experience and made zero friends out of it. My only friends are one that lives in Louisiana, a childhood best friend that's still 20 and hard to reach, and friends I made through work that are beyond their going out years. So how do I put myself out there to make friends? Also, a hopeful follow-up question. What are some fun things to do with friends in New York? P.S. Here's the corny part where I thank you guys for making me laugh. I swear we didn't write this in <laughs> and tell you your podcast is my absolute favorite. It really is well, something I look forward to. Also, it actually doesn't say that. You just added that in, no, Gabby. No, 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 no. This person, you're not going to believe what this actually says. Oh, my God, please. Also, I regularly pray for Gabby to never get canceled. <laughs> I'm not religious, but I hope it's helping. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's what's been saving me. <laughs> Is this like, is this Maddie from the future going back like you just be just writing something for yeah. us? Being like, I really hope this isn't the episode that yeah. brings me down. 
So wow. what, do you, what do you think of their actual question? The priority I, rating. I have an idea, which is that, all right, so you're 21, you're in community college, you have a lot of free time. I would say take something like an improv class. Yes. That's a great way to just meet a bunch of creative, interesting, fun people. Something like that. Doesn't have to be improv, but something something that t- bring that puts you in front of a new group of people. Or something like there's like a running club near you. Like I know if you're in New York, if you like running, there's like a ton of running clubs and it's yeah. like and then people like go out and get food afterwards. Like that's a great way to meet people too. Or sports, you play softball. Yes, I something play pickup like, softball. Yeah. You can sign up for softball leagues in Prospect Park. That's where mine is. Uh they also have some in Central Park. It's like any sport, any like organized thing. Yeah. You're going to probably find people in the same situation. Church as you. of Scientology. <laughs> that is where you're most likely to make friends yeah. and some trauma along the way. Yeah. <laughs> Someone just goes to the Church of Scientology. I'm just here for the vibes. I'm just like <laughs> You never told me what they said about your thetan levels. Oh, um I ta- I mentioned the banana thing and then it went off. <laughs> <laughs> they said oh we think you, we have think you have some stuff to unpack there something about bananas that you made <laughs> i was like yes i'm 100 percent with you we need to do this i'm gonna do it tomorrow see ya and then i and then we went to see avenue q they really gaslight you at the at those places they're like oh well, like- it's a scam that's what it is it's that it's there to extract money from you that's what they do yeah would you do it Join the Church of Scientology? Yeah, dude. I'll probably pass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm real connected to Judaism. <laughs> not even, I'm really not religious, but that now I play that card. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm yeah. Like, oh, now I'm super Jewish. Yeah. False idols and all. <laughs> oh, to this person, I would also say if you're some kind of religion, like, you know, stop. It, there might be a progressive church, a progressive temple, like yeah. nothing that's too old school. But... Or a conservative one. Maybe you hate gay people. Maybe you just really hate them. You're Join like, hey, I want to meet. Hate I want to meet like-minded, hateful people. Yeah. Whatever your hobby is, whether it's softball or hate crimes, because we don't judge. <laughs> Join your I'll, I'll judge a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no canceling me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Guest privilege. Here's um, a fascinating one that I think is fascinating for a reason I'll explain later. Potential trigger warning for death and mortality. I have an extremely, I have extremely bad thanatophobia, the fear of my own death. Oh, okay. And I used to be able to ignore it, but I'm getting to the point where I can't. Um, I would, however, like to thank Lucas for giving me brief moments of distraction from it. Aww. No pressure. You're just distracting this person from the thought of their imminent death. Oh, that's, that's good. Thank you. I, here's why I think this submission is weird. Does the fear of your own death need a name? Like, everyone has that fear. Yeah. It's not like fear of spiders, like, arach- I have arachnophobia, because mm. that's, like, more rare. Everyone fears their own death. But maybe when it's, it's like, when it becomes, like, a debilitating yeah, thing, yeah, 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 like, yeah. I wonder if it's also, like, you know, I don't know, if, I mean, they can't answer. I was like, going to be like, ask this person. But, like, I wonder if it's, like, you know, fearing what it'll be like when it happens or fearing that, what if I die tomorrow, you know? Because I get that. I get, like, anxiety about, like, Oh, I hope I don't die early and leave my family. Right. But I don't really get anxiety about like the process of death when it eventually happens. Mm. I'm exactly the same in that I I would hate to die anytime soon. There's a lot that I want to do and enjoy in life, but like the actual process of dying, of passing on does not that alone does not scare me. Cause in my mind I'm thinking that cause like I don't remember what life was like what anything was like before I was born, and I imagine it's gonna be like that after I die. That it's going to be relatively peaceful. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah. So you can't know. And that I think is maybe the most kind of like fear reducing part of it. Mm. It's like, I feel like when something's completely out of your control, you just got to be like, well, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, this poor person who was like, this podcast is the one time I don't think about death. And we were like, <laughs> 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 what if we talk about it for five minutes? Yeah. Yeah, what if yeah. we're what if we're like, well, you could die, but it'll be all right. Yeah. What if we just like really triggered this person that you could die this way, you could die that <laughs> just like <laughs> Yeah, um, what if we're like, Maddie, what how would you like to die? <laughs> yeah. Do you oh, have an I ideal way? I mean I just wanna die old. I want I mean, I wanna live like so old. Like it does give me anxiety, like the idea of living like a short life. Like yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I wanna live to like a hundred and I wanna be I mean it's such but I wouldn't like die in my own home, but just like comfortably. Yeah. I don't know if I'd wanna know what was coming or not though. I would wanna like you know what I mean? I don't wanna like 
I don't want to get hit by a bus, but somewhere in between that and like, mm. I know I'm going to die three months from now would be a nice. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, just yeah. like, you know, conscious and talking to people and everything. I would want to go in my sleep just as peaceful as possible. That's all I want. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But oh. also like a similar like when I'm like very old. Um, I will say I am a little afraid of like getting to a point where like I can't. I want to be able to take care of myself relatively well. Like I, I would, I would really hate to have like Alzheimer's or something like that where I, where my mind goes and then I become like a burden. I, that's what I'm very afraid of. Mm. Yeah. yeah. My, my grandma has dementia right now and it like scares me. I mean, she's really old, so I get it. She's like 95, Damn. but she like, it's kind of nice because she has a little bit of happy dementia as opposed mm. to like sad there's there's people who are like they don't know where they are so they're like bitter and angry about it but she will be a little confused but then she'll like shrug and just be like oh i don't remember mm. and i do think that's like kinda, that's good kind of speaks to her character a little bit mm. my grandmother also has both alzheimer's and dementia but my mom says because my mom is like basically a live-in carer for her now she like wow. takes care of her full time and uh but my mom says that it's just reduced my grandmother to be to what she is at her core, which is just the sweetest person. She's just a real big sweetheart. Yeah. Um, my grandma's kind of going through the same thing. And it's like, yeah, she almost seems, I mean, obviously it's like incredibly hard, but almost seems like happier and a little more carefree than I see her being a long time. Like in certain moments, I know I'm sure yeah. for certain moments it's really hard for her, but like, yeah, that is like kind of beautiful when you're like, oh, this is like, yeah, this is who you are at your core. Yeah. Yeah. Well, enough about dementia. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wait. Let's do one more. One more. Do we have one more? Do we have one more? I think. We... I don't know that we do. Do we not? I don't think so. Um, oh yeah, you're right. I, anyway, I I am curious to hear Maddie's take on our final segment. Oh yes, of course. So uh, the final, the way we end the podcast is we have a thing called Self Perception Corner where we ask our guest to say how they Your believe it's open yeah i'm like my face is in shock i'm, like, oh, I'm so scary <laughs> self-perception you... corner sounds like where i go when i have a panic attack yeah. <laughs> please uh, this is what it is we ask our guests to describe how they believe they are perceived by other people and then we say how we actually perceive you <gasps> oh my god jumped out the window again <laughs> oh my god okay okay um i think i'm is it like a three word thing or just a no, general? No, no, you can take as much Many time as you need. You want. Yeah. Okay. I, it'd be funny if I was like, if you were like, you actually, <laughs> you actually overhyped yourself a little bit in that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think I'm probably perceived, hopefully nice, um, but maybe a little bit conflict avoidant or a little bit nervous. Um, and I, uh, I, maybe, maybe a little anxious. Um, but also, hopefully, like, I'm having a good time. Is that too general? That's no. fine. That's great. Okay. Are you having a good time? Not right, right now. Right I mean, now like, and in, in life. life. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think so. Is there a difference, in, before we get into what we think, uh, is there a difference in between how you feel like you're perceived by strangers versus, like, people really close to you? Oh, interesting. Um, Maybe, Yeah. Yeah, I think like the 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 veil drops a little bit around like family member. Right? Family mm -hmm. members probably know me best, I think. Right. Yeah, but I don't know what the difference would be. Maybe a little bitchier. <laughs> Not bitchier, but like you know, they've seen me at like the the low points. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll start off by saying that when I first met you, because I I saw you at the show that we were both booked on, mm -hmm. and I immediately because like. It was a weird show where a little Sasquatch was on, and we never had seen little Sasquatch oh gosh, before. And no disrespect to little Sasquatch, but we didn't get a lot of the we didn't get a lot of the material because we were unfamiliar with like the lore surrounding <laughs> little Sasquatch. And a lot of people were really into it; they were laughing there because they got every reference or anything, which is great. Who's but little Sasquatch? He's what? Well, that's a great question. Um, he's like a he's he got very big on Twitter, and he has a massive following. He also has a podcast called Son of a Boy Dad. I think and he's, he's very popular online he was booked on this show where he did stand up and afterwards uh, I because I, I saw you and I thought you were spectacular so I anytime I from the beginning of me doing stand up I made her like a silent vow to myself that I s said anytime I see anyone that I like 
no matter how big or how small, whatever, uh, in comedy they are, always go up and say that you like their stuff. Give them the compliment. Make it brief, but just mm. always never stop yourself from giving someone a compliment if you, f- if you feel oh, you I want to. Oh, I love that. Um, and that's what I felt when I saw you. I was like, so good. And so I immediately wanted to see. And then you immediately were like, oh, my God. And I just you when you said that you knew me as well, I was like, oh, I'm such at ease right now. You like you just you would. It was very beautifully disarming. Your your presence. Oh, it was great. Thank you. Yeah. That's so nice. <laughs> you and I have just met for the first time. Yes. And um, how would you feel in the kitchen 30 minutes ago? <laughs> <laughs> Different world. <laughs> Let me tell you that much. I think. Yeah. The idea that you come off as an anxious person, I think, is maybe true because I feel like I see it in myself as well. Mm. So I feel like I see like similarities, but it like doesn't take away from how like invested you are in like what other people have to say, I think. And uh, it's not just because we're doing a podcast and that's the format where we like chat. I I just feel like and maybe I'm getting this wrong that you're not someone who checks out a lot. Uh, oh, thank you. Like present. That is a good thing to bring up. That's good. That's a good detail. I've been noticing that more in people lately because, mm. like, I feel like when I like people the most or when they're really observant, because mm. that mm. is one thing I'm actually the opposite of. I'm pretty incurious <laughs> for, <laughs> for someone who, like, you know, does comedy and observes certain parts of the world about mm. other people, like their physical features and like just like whatever. Like, I sometimes don't notice. But I feel like you notice things and pick up on them. And then the the last thing I'll say is that when I was watching your stand up an hour and a half ago and then talking to you now, I'm like, that is a pretty like you have a pretty different stage like persona than I feel like you do off uh, off screen or off stage. And I'm curious how like did you cultivate that like on purpose kind of or do you feel like something else that like, comes out on you when you're on stage? I think I'm really uh tuned into kind of being a people pleaser hopefully not in a sellout like shady way but just you know what i mean i want people to like me and i want i don't like conflict really in real life like i want to be nice to everybody but then on stage is kind of like a nice way to like you can be like more of a you know you can just be colder and not like care about that as much in a way that's like kind of uh therapeutic a little bit Mm. yeah for sure it's almost better to do it that way because like you do have to gauge what the crowd is doing but there also is a sense where like you do have to take control over the situation yeah yeah you can't be on stage and be like oh sorry sorry was that okay (laughs) yeah it's like that just can't work and then it's such a nice like i feel the pressure to be like that all the time but then when you're on stage it's like the one time that you're like that you say things to people that are so, like you know what i mean go to someone in the front row and be like oh fuck you it's like i would (laughs) never say that to someone in real life but it's a very cool um like yeah, it's cool to like step into that a little bit. It brings confidence out of you. And I think that's what you need that's what an audience needs is because you're basically thinking for them for however long you're on stage. Oh, that's a brilliant way to put it. Yeah. And so it like when I'm an audience member, it's like it's the nicest thing when you can tell someone is really confident because you're like, Okay, I'm gonna be taken on a journey and I'm gonna be safe. Yeah. That's what that's what happens when someone is as confident as like someone as you are on stage. Oh, thank yeah. you. That's like what uh, Jim Carrey said when he was he was like trying to figure out what audiences wanted, and then it dawned on him that they want to be free of concern. Yes. Wow. Yeah, thinking for them is like a brilliant way to put it. That's so interesting yeah. because what it is, you you want to like sort of tune off and just be like carried somewhere. Exactly. And then when you are when you're like, oh, this person might drop me, is when people tense up and they don't laugh and they're yeah, like yeah, disconnected. Yeah. Yeah. Or, if, or if you feel like someone is not that confident in what they're saying and they're like, try, you're like, oh, am I going to be, am I going to be okay? Like, it's, it's a, li- yeah, that's, that's where the fear comes in. Mm. But not with you. Yeah. Yeah. And you're a very cool person. I hope yes. to keep getting to know you better. Oh, and would you, you please too. plug and promote anything you have, anything you like? Yes. I am uh, going on tour this summer <sighs> with, um, oh, co-headlining yeah. with another really funny comic, Emil Joachim, Ooh. if you know him, was just on Jimmy Fallon like two days Hell ago. Yeah. Um, but those dates will be on both of our Instagrams. So Emil Joachim, Maddie Tweener, Maddie T. Wiener. Yep. Um, but yeah, come out to the tour. It's going to be like around the country. It'll be really fun. Hell yeah. Oh, and one last thing. Kudos to you for fucking sticking with Wiener. Because you know what the biggest cop out of all time is? When John Boner pretended his name was John Boehner. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. It's spelled differently. Have the balls. 
No, I'll stick up to be a boner. My 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 name is Maddie Big Fat Veiny Dick. And yeah. I, <laughs> and I will stick by that. Give it up for Maddie Big, Big Fat Veiny Dick. Fat dick. Uh, wait, do you have anything you want to plug? Um, I do, but I'm forgetting. So just follow. Wait, hold on. Me I on Instagram. I have a couple things. A uh, couple. Booked and busy, Lucas. Oh wait, okay. For those listening to this podcast in New York, you may know that there, my mic is called Anne Hathaway Presents. There's another mic called Jerry Seinfeld Presents. There's another show called Casey Anthony Presents. We are all doing a crossover show on Hell April yeah. 29th at Star Bar Woo. at 7 p.m. More details on my Instagram. Please come through. Nice. Um, uh, I have a few shows on my website at lucastarnold.com. Lucas Tweener Arnold. Lucas Tweener <laughs> Arnold. Um yeah, so uh, April 22nd, I have a show with 24-Hour Kiss Club. That's our sketch group. Uh, April 27th, I have a bar show at Route 66 Smokehouse. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to be doing a show with Austin Nasso, who is a TikToker and an uh, L.A. comedian. He's doing a show on May 5th at Asylum NYC. And then May 11th, I'm going to be doing uh, Maddie Gross's show, which is Are They, You Know? Oh, wait, I'm on that one, too. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are They, You Know? Are They, you know, know, I'm the I'm the token straight on that show. <laughs> oh, and catch uh, Lucas as the new Troy Bolton in the remake of High School Musical. <laughs> <laughs> that hopefully I will make someday with my iPhone. As the two class brothers suggested. I'm going to be part of the gritty Christopher Nolan reboot. <laughs> <laughs> Troy is a drug addict. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well. Okay. Round of applause for Maddie Wiener one more Maddie, time. You've been amazing. Thank yes. you thank so you much so for much coming, for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. This thank is so you. much fun. And thank you for watching and listening. We will see you next week. Hell yeah. Wait, let me try to f put my. Oh my God. Fuck you. Ooh, that was tough. I couldn't get it fully behind my head. For those I'll listening. I'll put my leg I'll... behind your head. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll put my leg behind your head. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it at the same time. That's scissoring, Ooh. baby. <laughs> And that's how that position was born. Feel old yet? Okay, that's it for me.